Yes, guys, let's read through question number two. Choice Limited grants 100 stock options to each of its 1000 employees on 1-4-2009 for 20 rupees. So date of grant being 1-4-2009, exercise price being 20 and the number of options granted 100 stock options to each of the 1000 employees. So basically 1 lakh options depending upon employees at the time of vesting of the option. Market price for the share was 50 rupees. These options will vest at the end of year 1 if the earnings of choice limited were 16 percent or it will vest at the end of year 2 if the average earning for 2 years is 13 percent and lastly they will vest at the end of year 3 if the average earning of 3 years is 10 percent. 5000 unvested options lapsed on 31st March 2010, 4000 unvested options lapsed on 31st March 2011 and 3500 unvested options lapsed on 31st March 2012. Following are the earnings of Choice Limited. First year's earnings are 14%, second year earning is 10% and third year earning is 7%. 850 employees exercise their vested options within a year and remaining, option un, sorry, remaining options were unexercised at the end of the contractual life. That means they are unlapsed. Pass the journal entry for the above. Now, if you observe, there are three vesting conditions. The first vesting condition is for the first year. Now, check year 1. He is saying that the options will vest at the end of year 1 if the earnings of choice limited are 16%. So, the vesting period should be, if the date of grant is on 1-4-2009, my vesting date should be 30th, sorry, 31st March 2010. Coming down to 30, 31st March 2010, the earnings given there in the tab tabular form is 14 but it would have vested if it was 16. So that means that the first vesting condition is not satisfied. Then what is my expectation? That the options will vest at the end of year 2. Because year 1 they did not exercise. So they did not vest. So I am expecting reasonably that they can vest at the end of year 2. Now you will say anyways there is third vesting condition also. Why shouldn't I expect that the vesting will be done in 3 years? Let's take a fair example. Let's take a person, you are writing an exam. Your dad has given you three attempts. He says that you have to clear the attempt, the exam within three attempts. What will be your first reaction? First attempt itself will clear. Let's say first attempt did not clear. At the end of the first attempt, after you got the result, if your dad asks you again, when are you going to pass the exam, you won't directly say the third attempt, right? Because there is an attempt in between. So my reasonable expectation will be, I will try to pass the exam in the second attempt itself. Same way, when the first vesting condition was not satisfied, my reasonable expectation will be to satisfy the vesting condition in the second year. What is the second year vesting condition? It will vest at the end of year 2 if the average earning of 2 years is 13%. Come on, do the average of the first 2 years from the table. First year 14, second year 10, second year also it did not vest. When the options did not vest at the end of year 2, year 2 my expectation will be that the vesting condition will be satisfied in year 3. Check year 3. Year 3 the options will vest if the average is 10%. Do an average of all the 3. Is it satisfying? Yes. 14 plus 10 plus 7, 20, 31 divided by 3 is 10.33. Satisfies the vesting condition. So the options will vest only at the end of year 3. However, this information will not be available for you at the end of year 1. Because year 1 only thing I know is year 1 earning is 14. Year 1 vesting condition says it should be 16%. This is only the information which I have for year 1. And I can say that the vesting condition did not be has not been satisfied. So my reasonable expectation will be that the vesting will be done in second year. So when I am doing for the year 1, my vesting period is 2 years. Come to year 3 then. Sorry, year 2 then. Year 2, vesting condition is not satisfied. My expected vesting is 3rd year. So my vesting period is 3 years. 3rd year actually vested, so vesting period is 3 years. So when you record the vesting period, there is a change in the vesting period from year 1 to year 2 and 3. Because year 1, I will write the vesting period as 2. Year 2 and 3, I will write the vesting period as 3 years. So let's start. First, give, write down the given details. Number of options granted.
100 employees into 1000 options per employee, 1 lakh. Exercise price per share is 20. Market price per share is 50. Comparing these two, I can get the intrinsic value. Per option, that is rupees 30. That's sufficient information guys. Then you can start framing your table. What is the first balance sheet date? 31st March 2009 was the date of grant. First balance sheet date will start from 31st March 2010. Second balance sheet date 31st March 2011. Third balance sheet date 31st March 2012. Start with number of options expected to vest. Check number of options expected to vest. How many options were there? 1 lakh. But check, come down below. 5,000 unvested options lapsed on 31st March 2010. So number of options will become 95,000 here. Next. 4,000 unvested options lapsed on 31st March 2011. Out of 95, 4 went out. 91,000 will remain. Last year again, 3,500 went out. So balance number of options are only 87,500. What do we need? To calculate total loss, we need intrinsic value per option. Intrinsic value per option is calculated as 30 rupees. Multiply, we'll get total ex employee compensation expense. Let us call it as ECE guys. Employee compensation expense or the total loss to the company. Total loss to the company will be 28,50,000, 27,30,000, lakhs 25,000,000, 26,25,000, 26,25,000. 26,25,000. Vesting period. If the options were vested in the year 1 itself, I would have directly written vesting period as 1 year here. But on 31st March 2010, vesting condition was 16% net profit. I got only 14% net profit. I know that the vesting period is not 1. On 31st March 2010, my reasonable expectation will be that the vesting condition will be met at the end of year 2. So my vesting period will be taken as 2 years. This is the most important part. Standing on 31st March 2011, that means at the end of the second year, I know even that second vesting condition is also not satisfied. So vesting period is definitely not two. So I will expect reasonably that the vesting condition will be satisfied at the end of third year, three years. Third year actually vested, so three years. Employee compensation expense, EC, cumulative. Cumulative EC 28,50,000 if the vesting period is 2 years, 1 year is already completed. So into 1 by 2, 14,25,000. 27,30,000 if vesting period is 3 years, 2 years are already done, 18,20,000. Last year, 
26 lakhs 25,000 into 3 by 3. You will get the same answer. 26 lakhs 25,000. EC already provided in the previous year. First year nil. Second year he has already provided 14,25,000. Third year he has already provided 18,20,000. To be provided in current year. First year he has to provide 14,25,000. Next year he has to provide 3,95,000. And final year he has to provide 8 lakh 5. Check the calculation once. Then if you are done, then you can go for the entries. 2-2 two, two entries at the end of each year. 31st March 2010, 31st March 2011, 31st March 2012. 2 entries every year. Same entries. ECE to ESO outstanding, PNL to ECE. EC is employee compensation expense, ESO outstanding is employee stock option, outstanding account. EC to ESO outstanding and PNL to EC. Pass those three entries. Sorry, pass those six entries for three years. My entry should be employee compensation expense. To employee stock options outstanding and then PNL account debit to EC. This is a combination of two entries that we have to pass for three years. You know the amounts, the amounts are already derived. First year 14,25 on 31st March 2010, 31st March 2011, 3,95, 31st March 2012, 8,5. Two entries. Total you will get six entries. Yes guys, two more entries towards the end for the exercise and for the laps. Exercise entry, there is no particular date given. So don't uh, record any entry. It should be within a year. That's it he said. Within a year. So let me take the entry on 31st March 2013 then. How many employees vested uh, exercise 
850 employees exercise the option. Bank account debit. How much? 850 employees. Each employee were allotted 100 shares with an exercise price of 20. This is 17 lakhs. Employee stock option outstanding account debit. 850 employees, 100 options per employee. Loss per option is 30 rupees, that is the intrinsic value. 25 lakh 50,000. 2 equity share capital. 850 employees, 100 options per employee, face value being 10, 8,50,000. Finally, securities premium, you can call it as balancing figure, 34 lakhs. That will bring us to the end of exercise entry, but how many options are exercised? 850 employees into 100 options per employee, 85,000. How many options vested? 87,500 vested, 85,000 exercised. That means 2,500 lapsed. ESO outstanding account debit. 2,500 options into 30 rupees, 75,000. Transfer this to general reserve. Observe, I have created cumulative 14.25 plus 3.95 plus 8.5. I have created 26.25,000 of provision. I debited 25.50 and 75,000. 26.25 years outstanding exactly tallies. Yes guys, read the question number 3 then. The following particulars in respect of stock options granted by the company are available. The grant date is 1st April 2008. Number of employees covered are 50. Number of options granted per employee are 1000. Fair value of options per share on the grant date is 9. Options will vest to employees serving continuously for 3 years from the vesting date provided the share price is 70 or above at the end of 2010 level. So double vesting condition both should be satisfied. One thing is they have to be in continuous employment for 3 years. Second thing is that the share price put, uh, you know, the share price should be more than 70. Estimated number of employees satisfying the continuous employment were 48 in 31st March 2009, 47 on 31st March 2010. Number of employees actually satisfying the vesting condition are 45. But however, the share price in 2010-11 was only 68. So though, the, though we have employees who are covering the 3 years of continuous employment, however, the share price did not reach the limit of 70. So the options will lapse at the end of 3 years period. Calculate the expenditure and show important accounts in the books of company. So let's start.
First record with the information given, number of employees covered are 50, so number of options granted are 50,000. Directly fair value is given to you as 9 rupees. Don't have to break your head. That is just a given information guys, you can provide that. But talk about the balance sheet dates required now. The options were granted on 1st April 2008, so my first balance sheet date is 31st March 2009. Second balance sheet date is 31st March 2010 and the last one is 31st March 2011. Three balance sheet dates. Start with number of employees. Expect to West. Read information is given. Number of employees ex satisfying the condition of continuous employment were 48 on 31st March 2009. Per employee he granted 1000 options. So number of options, I'm sorry, number of options expected to West per employees. Number of options expected to West 48,000. Second one. 31st March 2010, 47 for 47,000, 1000 options per employee. Finally, continuous employment was satisfied by 45,000 employees. Multiply with the fair value of option. Fair value of option is given to us as 9. So my total employee compensation expense four lakhs thirty two thousand four lakhs twenty three thousand and four lakh five thousand. Vesting period 3, 3 and nil. Last year don't take it as 3 years because 3 years are over but it did not satisfy the other vesting condition. So I cannot take any vesting period there. Sufficient enough information to calculate your EC. Cumulative EC is 4,32,000 into 1 by 3, 4,23,000 into 2 by 3, last year nil. So cumulative EC is 1,43,000, no, 1,44,000 Two lakh eighty two and nil. Already provided in previous year. Last year I did not provide anything because it was the first year. First year 1,44,000 to be provided, 1,44,000 provided in the first year, so 1,38,000 to be provided in the second year. Last year already 2,82,000 provided, my required provision is 0, so this will be negative 2,82. There is 0 in the top. So important accounts he said. So make
maintain an ECE and ESO outstanding. They are the only two accounts that you maintain throughout when you are following share based payment. There is no other accounting entries. One account is of ECE. Employee compensation expense account debit and credits the next one is employee stock options outstanding account again a credit and a debit first entry to be passed on 31st March 09 Amount is 1,44,000. Entry is ECE to ESO outstanding. 31st March 09. To employee stock option outstanding. 1,44,000. Posted into 31st March 09 even in ESO account. By ECE account. 1,44,000. What do I do with the ECE? ECE is a nominal account. It should be transferred to P&L at the end of the year. So on 31st March 09, by P&L will always close this information. 1,44,000. That will bring us to the end of the first year. But your ESO outstanding, we have to carry forward the balance to the next year. It's a provision maintained. So to balance carried down, balanced on the debit side, that means it has a credit balance of 1,44,000. Bring it down to the next year, 1,409. Balance brought down, 1,44. Come on, next year entry. After record a provision for 1,38, repeat the entries. Date is 31st March 2010. ESO outstanding 138. 1,38. Balance carried down 2,82,000. Balanced on 31st March 2010. This one always transfer to PNL by PNL. 1,38,000. 31st March 2010. That's it. AC account is over. ES outstanding. Bring it down to the next year again. 1-4-2010. By balance brought down. Last year's carried down balance is 2,82. What do I do? I don't provide anything in the current year. Because the amount of provision return is, return down is 0. Because it did not satisfy the vesting. Entire balance transferred to. General Reserve at the end of the year, 31st March 2011, put it to General Reserve 282 and close the statement. No exercise entry to be recorded.
Yes, guys, directly turn to question number 8 first. We'll solve that because that is similar to choice limited problem. Question number 8. Read through question number 8. The following particulars in respect of stock options granted for the year for the company are available. There is a grant date on 1st April 2008. Number of employees covered are 500 and options granted per employee are 100. Fair value of the option is 25. Vesting period shall be determined as below. If the company earns 120 crores or above after tax in 2008-9, the options will vest on 31st March 09. If condition A is not satisfied but the company earns 250 crores or above after tax as an aggregate in 2008-9 and 9-10, the options will vest on 31st March 2010. If condition A not satisfied, B not satisfied and if the company earns 400 crores or above after tax in aggregate for 2008-9, 9-10, 10-11, then the options will vest on 31st March 2011. Very similar to that net profit question where we have seen choice limited 14%, 16% and yeah, 14%, 13% and 10%. Very similar but the condition here is net profits. Check. First year, position as on 31st March 09, the company earned 115 crores after tax in 2008-9. Check. What is the first question condition? If the company earns 120 crores or above after tax in 2008-9, then the options will vest in on 31st March 09. 120 or more, 115 is definitely not satisfying the vesting condition. Then roll to the second year. So at the end of the first year, very clearly he says, the company is expected to earn 140 crores in the second year. If I earn 140 crores in the second year, the aggregate is 255. Second vesting condition is only 250. That means... At the end of first year, I am expecting that the options will vest at the end of year 2. Come down. So expected vesting is 31st March 2010 itself and number of employees are ent entitled to the option are expected at 474. Company earned 130 crores after tax in 2009. This is actual profit. What was the actual first year profit? 115. Second year actual profit is 130. Total is 245. Second year vesting condition is 250. It did not satisfy. But he is expecting to earn 160 crores in 2010-11 after tax. Guys, already actual profits are 245. If I earn 160 in the last year, then it will become 405. What is the last vesting condition? 400. That means it is sufficient for me. So I am expecting that the vesting will be done at the end of year 3. And the number of Employees expected to be entitled to the option is only 465. The company actually earned 165 at the actual profits 115 plus 130 245 plus 165 410. 410 is the amount of profits but the vesting condition is only talking about 400. That means that the options are vested. Number of employees to whom the options actually vest. No expectation here because 3 years completed is 450. Calculate the expenditure to be recorded each year. No journal entries. Only prepare the statement sufficient. Got it? So let's start. What are the dates for me? 31st March 2009 31st March 2010 31st March 2011 Number of options expected to vest Come on, come to the position as on 31st March 09 Number of employees expected to be entitled to the option are 474 how many options are given per employee? Turn to the first table. Number of options granted per employee are 100. So 474 into 100, 47,400. 
fair value of the option is given to you in the first table 25. Similarly, fill it up for the other two years as well. 46,500 for 2010, 25 being the fair value. Actual vesting is 450, 45,000 into 25 rupees. How much is this? Eleven lakh eighty five, eleven lakh sixty two thousand five hundred, eleven lakh twenty five thousand. Multiplied by twenty five is into hundred divided by four. Faster way of calculating is divided by four into hundred. Vesting period. First year did it satisfy? No. Then what is the expected vesting? First year he said 120 crores but he got only 115. First year vesting condition is not satisfied but he is expecting to earn 140 crores in the year 2. So 115 already earned. If he earns 140 then his total earnings will become 255. Vesting condition only was talking about 250. That means he is expecting that the options will vest at the end of year 2. Come to year 2. What is the actual profits? 130. Previous year 115, total 245, vesting condition 250, not satisfied and is expecting to earn 160 in the third year. 245 plus 160, 405, third vesting condition could be satisfied according to his expectation. So year 2, my vesting period is 3 years. Year 3, actually earned 165 crores, he satisfied the vesting condition. Come to the cumulative VC. 11,85,000 into 1 by 2, 11,62,500 into 2 by 3, third year should be 3 by 3, 11,25,000 into 3 by 3. Fill it up into 1 by 2, 5,92,500 into 2 by 3. Seven lakhs. Seven lakh seventy five. Last one is eleven lakh twenty five. Already provided in the previous year. First year is zero, so to be provided full amount five lakh ninety two thousand five hundred. is 2 lakhs 82,500 7,75,000 already provided 3,50,000 to be provided that is all he asked what is the EC to be provided or expenditure to be provided each year I'm sorry this is 182,500 And that is your final answer.